Welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here to build another implement for the yards in Grafton. Now, you know, there's these weren't used everywhere, but uh, I need one for the yard in Grafton, so we're going to build a gantry crane, so stay tuned. Okay, so like I said before, welcome back. I, I appreciate you coming back and sharing these moments with me. Uh, we're going to build a gantry crane. Now, in, a, in the uh, yards in the service area, that right outside the roundhouse in Grafton, there was a big area where the steam locomotives could draw, drop their ash into ash pits. And overhead was a great big movable gantry crane. And the whole crane stood on rails and it could move as well. And there were two ash pits and then a, a line of tracks down the middle where they put gondolas or hoppers or something to load these uh, ashes into to haul them out. And this was a good size area. So, you know, this is a large gantry crane. I don't have a lot of information on this crane. I have a photograph, um, well, several partial photographs that I've enlarged from other photographs, but not a lot of good detailed shots of this. So some of this is kind of guesswork, and uh, some of it is just uh, taking pictures and blowing them up to scale and using a scale ruler to try to measure some things. So anyway, this is a little bit of a complicated build, uh, but I'll take you through the process and show you what I did to come up with the end product that I'm going to put together, and uh, we'll just make this up as we go along, so let's jump into it. And the only thing I have as far as a drawing on this really is uh, this proposed drawing where they were going to extend the ash pits at one time. But you can see where the old ones ended and there was two tracks on either side and a track down the middle where they put the hopper cars to uh, load the ash into. And then the gantry crane had a rail outside of those outside tracks the full length and it could roll back and forth and uh, you know get ash out of the pit at any point. They never did extend this the way this is drawn. There was other things that happened in the yard so this uh, you know you got to be careful when you look at drawings a lot of times they don't always happen the way uh, the drawings show you when they're proposed. Now I don't have a whole lot of good pictures of this either. I have two pictures and then bits and pieces that I'm able to blow up of where it just barely shows and other photographs of things that were uh, taken pictures of in the yard. Uh, this is one of the better ones and you can see this doesn't you're unable to really blow it up and get a lot of good detail. It, it goes out of focus really quick. But I can see the motor carriage up on top across the beams and it moved back and forth from one end of the long beams to the other end of the long beams. There was this uh, arch across the center of the big beams. There was a, uh, you know, a, an operator's house that hung down off to the side underneath of one of those big beams. And then there was uh, motor linkages that went out to the ends and on the far right of this photograph you can see uh, kind of a pipe that extends out past the end of the uh, uprights and this goes down and drives the wheels and there was one on each side for uh, the same wheel uh, on the far side of, of both of these uh, upright legs that actually moved the whole thing back and forth on its tracks. So the whole unit could move and then the uh, carriage on top could move back and forth with the clamshell bucket to uh, get the coal up out of the pits as well. This next photograph, you know, it's, it's really hazy. You can't bring it up and show a lot of detail. You can see a little better the drive system that drove the uh, wheels underneath the whole assembly on the right hand side where the other picture showed the one on the other side. There's a handrail across the top because there was uh, ladders up the end of these where the operator could walk up and go across these and use these handrails across a little walkway to get down to the uh, you know the operator shed that hung underneath the middle. 
you can kind of see shapes of the motor unit and everything that moved up on top of those big beams uh, but you know most of the small detail kind of gets lost in the haze unfortunately now these next four shots here you know there's not a lot of detail in them you can kind of get the idea of shapes of things but each one of these just gives you ideas of what was going on there and really are just not detailed shots at all unfortunately this next shot is uh, you know the, the photograph is really high in contrast so it does uh, give you a little detail when you blow it up it's still not great um, but it does uh, give you an idea a little better of how some of the things were situated on the crane these next three pictures you know uh, they kind of look totally useless but uh, you know it does give you some shape of things not really detail pieces but you know at least it gives you some idea of the shapes of how things fit together and that's about it on these three this you know the first picture I showed and then uh, this picture here really are the best pictures I have of this you know I can go through all these pictures and kind of get you know where the windows were in the control cab I can kind of get an idea of that archway that went across the top on one of the pictures you can blow it up to the point where you can see a very faint lettering that says that uh, there's 30 feet clearance so you know from that I can blow this drawing up and use a scale ruler against the drawing on here and go from the railhead up to the I big I beam up on top and uh, scale that to 30 feet and then I can kind of get a measurement of what the uprights were on the sides and the widths and some of that uh, it's not going to be precise but it'll be close enough uh, to kind of make this up as I need to this one also shows the motor unit a little better um, some of the uh, support beams in between the legs that come up I don't really have any good shots of the motors or the details of how the uh, wheels are driven on the rails on either side and the motor unit up on top I know it has to have some kind of a track up on those beams to go across but I'm not really sure what that looks like either so you know on the right hand side you can see three little uh, things that extend out as well you know this needed power so down at each end of the great big long ash pit area there are telephone poles and then there are three wires that suspend between those two poles and those wires guide through these um, insulators of some sort or conductors at the end on the right hand side up there as it moved back and forth across the rails to get it power uh, there's a couple lights underneath uh, the clamshell bucket you know I'm gonna have to see if I can figure that one out I don't have a lot of real good shots of that I uh, did land load some other clamshell pictures of some buckets and steam shovels and that type of thing to kind of give me an idea um, I may just try to find some kind of used steam shovel or something in HO scale to uh, get the bucket off of I'm not sure I'm gonna handle I'm hell I'm gonna handle that one yet so you know I came together I'm gonna to start by putting the leg assemblies together that holds up the overhead beams and I know this had a 30 foot clearance so you know and judging by the scale that I came up with when I blew the picture up to the right scale I kinda of got the widths of everything at the top and bottom now the upright legs are actually two U-channel beams with uh, bracing in between them that make up each of the four legs. So I cut all these pieces, the uh, you know the center part of the beams, and then the strips for along the sides. It's a real shallow uh, U-type channel, and then I come back and glue all these sides on these beams to make the U-channel beams that I need. Uh, to make all the legs and there's four legs and two on each leg so I need a total of eight and then I come and cut you know just strips according to that drawing I know the strip at the bottom and the top are about two foot the top one actually extends up over the uh, upright beams on the far ends and then you know once I get that part of it glued together I uh, get a bunch of this angle and this is about the smallest angle that I could find uh, so I ordered this I, you know I didn't feel like making all the angle beams and everything and I go up 12 feet which is about halfway up that center point and I measure the width that I need and I get these angles cut to that 
and I know you know with the spacing between the eye channels that this is going to set in I cut all these uh, you know, members for the bracing in between those and go ahead and glue this assembly together then I come back and glue that onto the assembly halfway down the assembly and that's my first set of uh, angle iron braces in the legs now the sides also have plates everywhere where the uh, angle bracing comes down and meets the uh, U-channels on all this. So I go ahead and use my paper drawing and cut all these angles. And then I start adding all these angle beams in. It also has a little plate where they cross in the middle. And I'm just doing one side of these right now instead of both sides like I did on that center one. And then as I get all these in place, then I, you know, I can come back and, and go ahead and glue all the plates in place that uh, put all those together and cover all those joints. Now the plates stood out a little bit, so I actually had to cut a buffer piece for behind them where they cross the bracing as well and add that in. But that's one side of it done. And then, you know, I, I, the main U-channels that go up, there's all this little small bracing and uh, angle pieces that are welded in between the U-channels. So I just cut a whole bunch of these, and I come back and, you know, mark uh, two foot on centers with the staggered sides all the way up the beams, and I add all these small pieces into that as well and you know once I get one side totally complete then I just flip it over and add the angles and the cross bracing and everything to all that bracing in between all of that and uh, have that all together now here's just a view of it as it stood right there uh, you know I didn't want to add all this stuff to the other side until I go ahead and get some paint on this because it's just going to be hard to get down into some of those crevices and all those areas um, you know with everything the plates and everything put on the other side as well so I'm going to pre-paint this before I add the bracing and everything to the other side now another thing I want to add to all this I'm going to go ahead and finish this first side is, is on all those plates I'm going to go ahead and add rivets it's something I don't typically do but the plates are so big on this I think it really needs the detail so that I you know, just come back and mark where I wanted everything once I put a preliminary uh, paint on there so I can see my marks and uh, just drill all these holes and uh, cut all these rivets and glue them into place and you know that's one side that's totally done I gotta turn this over and repeat all that with the other side but then it'll uh, one set of legs will be close to being done and once I get those in place, I just come back, you know, and then put black paint over all of it to uh, disguise all the mistakes that the Riveter made when he was putting this together. He probably should have been fired. But anyway, I go ahead and start working on, you know, the other one because there's two of these towers and they both, you know, need to match. So I've got all this to do on a second one as well. And, uh, you know, on these uh, bottom edges here, uh, you know, there's wheels that go underneath of these. And uh, I just keep running it through my head how I'm going to do all this because there's no good pictures of it. But the one thing I know I'm going to have to do is, you know, this inside leg of those two braces I put on, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut off. There's plates that go back down there that hold the wheels in between, so this won't be seen eventually anyway. And on top of that, I've got the two main cross beams that cross over on the tops and set on top of this, both of these assemblies. So I need to put a flat plate on the top of the whole assembly. So I just set this upside down on thin plastic and cut it out and then come back and glue it into place. And you know, pretty much that's the whole structure for both sides, at least the basic structures uh, completed. And then uh, once I come back and just go ahead, once the riveting is done and put black paint on all of it, then, you know, I have the two basic sides ready to go. Okay, so there you have the first segment of building the gantry crane. Uh, some of this, you know, I, I don't have enough pictures to really show all the detail to, so some of it I'm kind of making it up as I go along. I do have some construction background, although I don't have a lot around steel working and that kind of thing. 
Uh, so I can kind of guess at structurally some of the things that maybe might have been there to support the insides of this and that type of thing. Uh, you know, pictures do uh, lead me in a direction and some of it, you know, as far as this basic uh, construction is very plain to begin with here. Uh, the wheels underneath, a few things, you know, I'm going to have to play with that and come up with some good ideas of how I'm going to go across uh, all that. In any case, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, there was a lot of gantry cranes, you know, of various sorts throughout yards all across the United States and small shops and stuff for locomotive uh, lifting and all kinds of stuff. So hopefully this is useful to you. If you know other people out there that could use this information, share it with them out there in a the hobby. That's what this is all about is just sharing of information and helping everybody that we can help. Um, so in any case, uh, thank you for coming back and subscribing to my channel. Uh, you know that there's a lot of good information coming your way. We're trying to do more short builds this year. I'm going to get into a, a larger build later on, but I still have some of these things that have one, two, or three episodes to complete. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get a lot of those built and out of the way. And uh, you know, just continue on with getting some good uh, information out there for you that'll hope you hopefully help you build. Uh, some buildings for your model railroad. So in any way, uh, you know, drag out some materials and start doing some scratch building. Uh, just play around and learn as you go. There's a lot of materials you can use, uh, different things you can try, techniques to use in building things. Uh, do whatever works for you and just you know build your craft and enjoy the hobby. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different uh, aspects to this hobby. Scratch building is just one of them, but it's one that, you know, if I'm going to do the build the areas that I want to model, it's something that I have to do. So hopefully in me learning all this and doing it as I go and sharing it with you, it'll help you do those things for your model railroad too. So just enjoy the hobby. Happy model railroading.